Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial. As the title says, we are going to add vegetation to this rendering using high resolution photos. We will first bring in all the elements and adjust the value of the photos to match our image. In the second part, we will adjust the colors to create atmosphere. Let's get started with the grass in the foreground. I'm only using photos from my photo packs. You can find all the infos in the description. So once I found a good photo to work with, I am just drag and drop it into my image. Let's find the right size and match it with the horizon of our image. I'm now using a mask of the building so that it doesn't overlap the building. Let's use a hue saturation filter on top and reduce the saturation. It's sometimes easier if you work on your image in two steps. In the first one, you work in black and white and you only care about your values. Especially when working with photos, you want them to match. You can use reference photos or just eyeballing it as I'm doing it here. In this case, I can clearly see that the grass in the foreground appears too dark. So let's make it a little bit brighter using a gradation filter. Let's add a sky to the image now. I'm using one of my free skies here. I worked with an overcast HDRI in my 3D scene and as you can see in the upper window we have some clouds in the reflection of the glass. So I simply want to use a sky that matches the lighting in the scene and the reflections. By bringing in the sky I noticed that it might look better if we add some more space to the top. More sky in most cases is pleasing to the eye. Everything looked too packed and composition wise it's just nicer like that. So now let's add some background. This one looks already quite nice. It matches very good. We only need to make a smooth transition between the grass and the background. Therefore I put the background layer on top of the grass. Then we need to mask out the building again. Now I can use a simple soft brush for a nice transition. And you can see how easily it matches in this example. Let's continue with our foreground now. I think a convincing foreground lifts your image up very easily because if you think of your image like a story you want to tell, the foreground is kind of the entrance to that story. If this viewpoint from which you're looking at the building is convincing, you can dive into the scene better and it's easier to sell the illusion. Composition wise, it's just the principle of layering your image. You can always work with a foreground, middle ground and background to create depth in your image. I'm using a grass brush now to define the edges of the foreground very roughly. And what I'm aiming for here is a nice balance inside the composition. I want to frame the building naturally with the shape of the higher grass in the foreground. So let's adjust the grass again to match the scaling. Let's add a spring tree from the collection. This helps also to frame the building and as I said before I am working in layers and with the tree added on the right side we create more depth and add a sense of scale. Let me just quickly demonstrate what I mean with layering the image. We have the foreground consisting of the meadow and the tree on the right. Then we have our middle ground which is our focus and we have the background. This way we create depth to the image and we also naturally frame the building. Ok, let's add another element to this image. This scene involves a walkway in the foreground which is part of that public park we are standing in. So the advantage of using multiple images here instead of just one photo is that we are in control and we are not restricted to the photo, but use them instead to create a nice composition in which we can decide how we arrange things. I'm using the transform tool to match the scale and then I'm using a soft brush to blend in the new photo and create a soft transition. Now we have all the image elements roughly composed and it's time to give this scene a little cleanup. So I'm always using the same layer structure inside of Photoshop for my layers. 
and give them colors so it's easier to find everything uh, when everything is nice nice and clean now it's time for the detail work and i'm taking care on the transition and the edges i'm using a grass brush here to give this grass a nice grassy edge now i add a 50 percent gray layer on top of the grass with this i can use the dutch and burn tools on this gray layer in a non-destructive workflow. That means if you would use the dodge and burn directly on the grass, it would have the same effect, but we wouldn't be able to change things later on. And we always want to keep the original layer and manipulate it on top of it in a non-destructive workflow. I'm making the edge here a little darker to add the illusion of a kind of shadow where the building meets the grass. I think this makes it a little bit more natural. I'm now adjusting the walkway again. I'm making it a little bit brighter using curves. Then I'm just using a soft brush to soften the edge. I am brightening up the grass a little bit more and take care of the edge of the foreground meadow. To me it kind of kind of lacks a natural look so I'm redefining the edge and try to make it look a little bit more natural. It helps to make it dark when editing so you can see what you're doing here. I then Give this foreground element more contrast by bringing up the brighter parts and darken the darker parts. Everything that is in the foreground usually has the most contrast and everything in the background has less contrast and less saturation in reality. So if we imitate this effect in our image, we create depth. Now I'm adjusting the size and position of the tree. I was not quite happy with it and gave it some redefinement. Made it a little bit bigger and tried to mirror it horizontally, but then I just left it there. I still want to be able to recognize the corner in the shape of the building. Also, I'm cropping the image to adjust the proportions of the image and bring back the building into focus. So far, we have composed all the elements and adjust the values. I'm quite happy with the composition now and it's time to continue with step number two of the process, adjusting the colors. To have more control over what we do, you can use different tools. I'm using a preset from Horoma here. It's a one-click solution inside Photoshop, also known as Photoshop Action. It comes with these handy check filters that consist of two red layers. What this does is you can use the color filter to display only the hues without any values. Also, you can check the saturation in your image. This is pretty handy in my case with the different photos we use to make sure the saturation intensity of each photo matches. So let me just show you what uh, I'm using this tool for. Now with both layers turned on we can see how strong each element is saturated. The more red parts are the one more saturated and the grey parts are less saturated. So now we can see that the grass layer is actually too saturated. On an overcast day like this everything is kind of uh, saturated the same at the same level and that's why I'm turning all the saturation of the grass layer down also foreground uh, grass is a little bit too saturated and also for the background layer I'm turning down the saturation so now if we turn off the check filters you can immediately see that our image has improved everything looks more natural and the cool part about this filter is 
you can also use another image that you like and check exactly how much this image is saturated and what colors are in the image. With the colors turned on I noticed that we need some refinement on that tree and um, use a grass brush here to mask, mask it and blend it better into the image. Now I'm using a hue saturation filter on top of the tree. I noticed that the trunk has too many reddish yellowish tones in it that I don't want. So I'm selecting only the yellow parts in the drop down menu of this filter and reduce the saturation. I can then invert the mask now and with a soft brush only affect the trunk and branches. So same idea here for the background. I'm using a hue saturation for the reds and you can use this controller to define what colors you want to affect so in this case I'm also taking in the yellowish um, parts that I want to desaturate so again with the grass I am just trying to find the right um, brightness here this is sometimes a back and forth and just testing what what looks looks good so I'm also using a little more contrast on this um, middle ground grass so the next thing is adjusting the sky it lacks some depth to me so I want the sky to appear a little brighter here on the horizon so I'm scaling it and sometimes it's good to zoom out a little bit so it's like squinting your eyes you can see how the shapes of the clouds match uh, with the composition. Now that we kind of brought all the photos to the same level in terms of saturation and color, we can now start off with the overall image adjustments, which is the more fun and creative part. Again, assigning colors and structure to my layers to keep track of things. Let's use a selective color adjustment layer now. With this filter I can basically define the hues for each color. Sometimes I have in mind what I'm looking for, sometimes it's just try and error. You can easily play with the values here and get a feeling for the palette you're looking for. Now I'm using curves to bring up the blacks for the background layer. It adds a little more depth as it is more in the distance and we are giving the illusion of some atmospheric fog. It also brings the building uh, more into focus. I then add a new blank layer on top and use the eyedropper tool to add some of that bluish color from the sky on screen mode. Same for the building, using a new layer on top on screen mode to get some of the bluish sky color as some sort of light wrap around the edges of the building. Now some refinement on the tree using a hue saturation adjustment and make the green of the leaves a little cooler. Now I'm using a selective color again to bring the reds a bit more up as I like the contrast between the blue tones in the sky and the building and this kind of reddish uh, parts in the surrounding. In a second step I'm using a soft brush to get rid of the red in the background and the trunk as I only want the color to appear on the foreground meadow. Let's use another hue saturation layer on the building I want to reduce the blues, but first I am setting the layer mode uh, of the rendering to normal so that the adjustment layer doesn't affect the underneath sky layer. Now I'm masking out some parts on the windows and the facade to bring back partially some of the blues. Now I want to use a color balance adjustment layer to increase the tonal contrast. That means I'm bringing up the reds and yellows and the shadows and in contrast 
bring up the blues and the highlights. You can see in the before and after that we have increased now the color contrast which adds more depth to the image. I'm happy with the result so far and what I usually do at this point is to merge all the layers by using shift command alt e and now I'm converting this layer to a smart object and then I'm going to use a camera raw filter. By using a smart object I can come back later and change the setting easily. Also if I want to change something in the rendering I can simply merge all layers again with the adjusted rendering and simply drag the camera raw settings to my newly created smart object. And as mentioned before that's non-destructive and that's what we want. I can now adjust the image just like you would do it in Lightroom. Again I'm just eyeballing here, you might come up with something different. But it's a nice way to quickly check what works and what doesn't. I'm adjusting the contrast and reduce the saturation again here for the yellows. Also I'm fine tuning the hues here and add a vignette to the image. You can see that I put more focus on the building and the grey concrete facade by reducing some of the greens and yellows in the surrounding vegetation. This is the last step now. I'm merging the layers again and use a camera raw filter again and there's some presets here you might miss. You can imagine that these work like Instagram filters, sometimes this can help you define a certain look. I'm going with that vintage instant filter here. I like the effect on the image and let's change the opacity down to 50%. And here we go. I hope you learned something new today. Leave me a comment if you have any questions and let me know what you think of this tutorial. Also, please leave a like and subscribe for more tutorials like these. Cheers guys, see you next time.